Hi, welcome to the how-to video series of Project Track for Jira, a place to learn more about Jira project tracking and how to save time while doing it. In this video, we will review the bulk operations feature. More precisely, we will show how to change the components on several projects at once by performing just a simple action. The bulk operations menu is available by clicking over Project Track in the main menu of Jira, accessible from each view of the Project Navigator the list view or the releases view. Let's go to the list view. The bulk operations menu is visible on any of the project tracks views at the top right. The same occurs within the releases view. If we click over the menu, we can see all the massive actions we can perform with this option. Let's see how to change the components of several Jira projects in bulk with project track. Remember, when performing bulk operations, the selected action will apply to all the projects in the current search, in any of the given views. In this case, we're working with the list view. Once you've clicked the components option, a pop-up window will show up and you'll get to choose from two options. To add new components to your projects and to remove components from your projects. Let's see how the removal option works. After clicking over the option, we get a confirmation with the number of all the projects selected where to perform this action, and then to choose from two other options. To remove all of the components available in the selected projects, or to remove specific components from the selected projects in the view. If we click over the second choice, we visualize the components available to remove across all selected projects. Those components shown might be in use in X number of projects within the count of projects where we want to perform this change. For this example, let's choose the Demo component and the DevOps components. After clicking Next, there's a confirmation message of the action we're about to perform. Then we proceed to actually remove those components. What would happen if we choose to add new components? When performing this action across several projects, you'll realize it has a similar setup as if we were natively creating a new component for one JIRA project. To create this component, we're asked more information about it. Name, which will be intranet, then choosing the person leading the component, and then describing it. After that, we choose the user responsible for the issues created within that project component. We can get to choose from the component leader, the one defined as default in the corresponding project, the project lead, or we just leave it unassigned. Let's choose the project default. It's also possible to add as many components as needed. Let's create a new one named CRM. Choosing Daniel as component leader and the issues created within will be assigned to the component leader. It's important to recall if any of the components we are creating already exist, those will be replaced with these new settings. Keep going with the process, we get to see a confirmation message about the change we're about to perform. We confirm, see the process, and that would be it. We can see all the projects where we have made the change. Now, let's check this change was actually made. We need to access any project where the change supposedly has been made, then accessing the components of the projects. And there you have a bulk operation of components in a matter of a few actions. This is a time saver, isn't it? Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to check our YouTube channel for more videos like this, hit the subscribe button, and follow us on our social media channels.